Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Um, here we good are. Good morning. In, uh, I believe this is uh, in May now, and we're continuing our discussion about prayer. And, mm-hmm. Uh, We've had an, an exciting time with this, and we're coming, getting close to coming to an end of it. And then we're gonna, uh, you and I are gonna move on to uh, really an adjunct to this, which will be uh, living in the supernatural. Um, yeah, which is one of my favorite studies that we've yeah, done. Uh, because prayer, we tend to think a prayer of, well, I give God a list, and. Mm-hmm. We'll see if he decides to do any of that. And if he does, great. If he doesn't, I guess it wasn't as well. Right. Um, and we're mostly thinking, the way we think, is <clears throat> can he, you know, give us a way to do this better and solve things, you know, naturally, mm-hmm. g- generally speaking. Um, right. Is, you know, is this going to turn out okay if it's all all things work, you know, naturally? And God says, actually, prayer is about dialogue with me, and it's what I'm going to deliver to you, both in terms of um, making all things work together for good, which is supernatural by itself, Mm -hmm. and for me to change you and to change circumstances. Uh, And one thing we've always learned about that is that it doesn't mean he changes two things. We would like him just to get rid of the, the difficult world. Right. Well, just Which he does Take care of that. No, <laughs> uh, no. You've, you've handed authority over to the enemy, and that life uh, is under this difficulty. In, in life, you're going to have trials. You're going to have trouble. Um, and then two is, um, he says, I don't violate people's wills. Mm-hmm. So that when you say for me, in, in our prayer life, well, well, I'm having conflict with my boss, so change my boss. Mm-hmm. And God says, well, I don't violate his will. Um, I will work to invite him to do things better and to ultimately have more respect for you. But um, I don't change his character if he has a choice not to. And sometimes, by the way, they go harder they, instead of easier. Mm-hmm. Um, so be careful there. But I have an answer for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and what I try to help people understand is that if we have a heart to follow God, we can trust that all things work together for good. Nothing is too difficult. Um, I will deliver to you the covenant. I'll bless you to make you a blessing. And it doesn't even matter what the circumstances are. Mm-hmm. Um, I can I can change it. And I'll do that step by step by step as you seek wisdom. So like, for example, um, you got conflict with your boss. Um, and he's being uh, disrespectful. Uh, okay, Father, what would you have me do? Well, I would like you, and I'm not saying this is what he's going to say. I'm just saying this is an example. Right, he's say. you're giving an example, yes. Um, well, sit down with that person and share uh, the dynamic of what's going on and why it would be better if you could do it differently. Mm-hmm. Um, and say, you know, how can I serve you? Uh, you seem upset. Uh, the things you're doing are disrespectful to me. I would like to stay here. I'd like to be part of this company. Um, how could we do it better? And would you be willing to talk mm-hmm. to me? Um, okay, so you're offering that invitation. Now, the, the person either says yes or no, just in general. Right. And if, if it's true disrespect... And there's a power, you know, uh, game going on. The person is going to say, I don't care about you. Just do what I tell you to do, period. No, I'm not going to talk to you mm-hmm. about that. Uh, well, that indicates I'm not going to, I'm not going to even consider changing, you know, my level of respect right, for right. you. Or, okay, sure, I'll talk. But the whole time it's defensive and blames you. And basically is I'm not really going to change any. You, you better conform to what I want. I told mm-hmm. you I was going to, but really I'm not. 
okay, well, that's another answer. Or, you know what, gosh, I, I didn't recognize that, and I see it would right. be better if, and uh, so sure, let's work on that together. Um, I want mm-hmm. to respect you. I see how that went, and um, um, gosh, you know, I, I didn't, it didn't really uh, hit me like that. So, yeah, thanks for sharing that, and let's work at that together. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, in, in the third case, probably you got down the road further with maybe a change. That right. Would, that would be healthy, and maybe you can practice getting even better and better and better. The other two, it's not changing. Mm-hmm. So instead of we pray God change him, um, we say, okay, given the fact that he's not going to change and maybe get mm-hmm. worse, what would you have me do? Right. Uh, and it could be, don't let it bother you. Stay there a little bit longer. Uh, hey, this guy's going to move on or he's going to be removed. Or you know what? Actually, I need you to go somewhere else and start looking and right. get your resume out. You know, and, and there's no answer to that other than God knows the answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and what I'm saying is he'll resolve it 100% so that you will experience the covenant. You are not going to live in an awful situation forever because God says, that is not my will. You can be confident of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and let me guide you into that uh, process of following me if you have a heart to follow me because I care about you and I can for those that have a heart to walk with me I can okay so this leads into a bigger question uh, that you and I got um, uh, with a request so why don't you go ahead and and raise it up and then I got a corollary to that but uh, why don't you raise up the question we got that actually is kind of about this whole issue yeah, this was a great question, and um, I'll just read you the text. That will be the easiest way to do it. Um, said, you know, I have a question. If God is, if Jesus is God in human form, then why do you think it seems like God and Jesus sometimes have differing traits? As I'm reading in Exodus, it seems like God's character in the Old Testament is very different than Jesus's character in the New Testament. Yeah. Now, that was a great question, you know, and I think something that people wrestle with a lot. Yeah, and uh, basically the question is, is you frame frame it up, which is really what everybody has, which is why they tend to reject the Old Testament, is mm-hmm. that it seems like the God of the New Testament is way different than the God of the Old Testament, and did it mean that he just changed into this different perspective and traits, and therefore should we just ignore the Old Testament? Uh, Mm. Because, hey, we're New Testament. And by the way, there's there's a lot of Christians that I know that say, I I only read the New Testament. Um, I don't even read the Old Testament uh, because of Well, and I think there's this wrestling, too, with what is the character of God as they look at that and, you know, and looking in just, you know, single incidents and not in the whole picture. I'm looking at, okay, so what is God's character and is he trustworthy if this is who he was in the Old Testament, but this is what I'm seeing in the New Testament. They're also questioning the goodness of God. Underneath it all, yes. Um, yeah. And then what is God's love and what does that mean? And and does mm-hmm. and, and, and what I say is that uh, the Christian church has translated God's love into what I call a sappy view of God's love. Mm-hmm. And a sappy view is... I accept everything all the time and it doesn't matter. Um, Mm -hmm. And whatever happens to you, you just is okay with me. And, you know, just understand that um, I accept everything. And that's just funny because as parents, you know, and and we see God as father, as parents, we would not define that as love. We would define, you know, there is something too with our children, setting boundaries, having consequences, there being some ways for them to be guided into what is best for them, right? Correct. Right. And so uh, we got to look at, is, and the question is, is the Old Testament God, New Testament God the same? The answer is yes. So first of all, let's go to Hebrews chapter 13, verses 7 and 9. Uh, Jesus, uh, uh, the Hebrew writer, makes a statement about God. What does he say? It says, remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines, for it is good that the heart can be established by grace, not with foods which have been, which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. Yeah. 
so he says uh, Christ who the question's about because he's representing you know the, mm -hmm. the image of God is the same and the word there is equivalent completely in all respects right yesterday past today and tomorrow so past mm -hmm. present future in other words he says one thing we need to understand that God has been God eternally and his right. nature doesn't change at all right uh, because in a way and just look at it in a simple way if it could change mm -hmm. then he couldn't be God right he'd be less than God mm -hmm. and so by this definition the answer per se is no he's the same uh, why? Right. He's, so then you have to wrestle with why it looks different. Yeah. So he's eternally God, um, and um, he's the same uh, completely, and the nature of God is is the same, and it's eternal. And and that the thing we can't fathom is eternity, mm -hmm. because it, we we think of beginning and end. So when we think of eternal, God's eternal God. Our question is, well, what was before that? <laughs> right. And we can't fathom it, and the answer is God. Is mm -hmm. that it's, it blows our minds, literally. Um, but he's eternally God. He's eternally the same. And and this has, we won't get into this, but this does have implication into our next series, which is the supernatural. Mm. Uh, because the thought, and there's, there's, and you and I have actually talked about this briefly, but... There's, it's called cessation theology, that the, mm -hmm. the, the work of God stopped. The gifts mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit stopped. Right. Um, those things don't exist anymore. Uh, or that, no, don't think you can hear God's voice, uh, so that doesn't exist. Uh, well, wait a minute. If God's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, it's not possible that those people elements of the nature of God exactly. and the relationship with God would be gone. Well, that means he did change and he's less than God. I mean, so it has big implications for mm -hmm. we should be open to if, if, if God can do supernatural things, which is the, the whole Bible is full of, right? why would we not experience them today? See, uh, mm -hmm. now, by the way, on the other side of it is, and we go back to the truth, he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. When we see Jesus in the Gospels, and we see how uh, the the disciples functioned with the supernatural, mm -hmm. was it strange? See, it wasn't. Was mm. it was it weird spiritual stuff that seemed like, wait a minute, that's that doesn't seem anything natural or normal. It's like weird. Well, that's yeah. They were in awe. They, so. they were in awe because of the amazing, overwhelming right. stuff. But it wasn't done right. in a way of, uh, you know, you have to, you know, appear spiritual or you got to fall mm -hmm. on your face or I got to scream at you. Right. Or, there weren't dramatics involved. It was truly. just, it just <laughs> was the nature of God, you know. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get into that. So this, this truth has a lot of bearing for how we proceed into our life of God now because we, we kind of have to answer this question. Okay, so That's great. I'm the same yesterday, today, tomorrow. Okay, now go to uh, Psalm uh, 33 and read. All uh, right. Uh, let's see, read uh, uh, 1 through uh, 5. Psalm 33, 1 through 5. And this okay. is, this is by the way, one verse, one set of verses of hundreds of verses, both of the New Testament. But um, it it says something about God. So go ahead and, and read that. Okay. And we can we can go further, but we're just trying to highlight the, this truth. Right. Um, Psalm 33, 1 through 5. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for, pra for praise from the upright is beautiful. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make melody to him with an instrument of ten strings. Sing to, him, sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is done in truth. He loves righteousness and justice. 
The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Okay, so um, uh, the word, mm -hmm. which uh, remember, uh, and this is in Hebrews chapter 11, 3, the world, the material, the physical, was created, mm -hmm. was created how? By God's spoken word. By the word. Mm -hmm. um, so the word is superior to the natural. Right. And he, he speaks that and says it. And then he says, the word of the Lord is right. In other words, it's completely trustworthy. And everything about it is completely right. Mm -hmm. So don't work around it and don't, um, uh, let's say, diminish it. Mm -hmm. Trust what it says and then process what it says uh, because it's, it's, it's true and it's right. All right. of his work is done in truth. Okay, so as he demonstrates this and speaks this, you can count on it being true absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we just read something in Hebrews. Christ is what? The same. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, so there's a truth. Mm -hmm. um, he said, trust that truth and build on that truth. Don't, don't push it under the table because okay. it doesn't seem to make sense to you. Right. Go the other direction because the word is, is right. I do everything based on the real truth. And by the way, there's a, this is in uh, uh, Isaiah. I can't lie. Mm -hmm. That's my nature. I can't, I can't bait and switch you. I can't kid you. Okay. And then he says he loves righteousness. Righteousness and justice. And justice. Um, and righteousness is right living. Mm -hmm. In other words, you have to be righteous to have relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this is uh, uh, Romans fourteen seventeen. The kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy. It's righteousness all by itself. Why? Mm -hmm. Not because of anything we do. It's because but we... But because what Christ did for us. We've received him. And when we walk with him, truly, mm -hmm. which is what we'll get to, we're covered by his righteousness. Because why? That's the only way we could have the relationship. And that, mm -hmm. and that is true for believers, non-believers. It's true for believers. And we'll mm -hmm. see that in a second, is that as a believer, you can actually walk away from that righteousness. Now, it doesn't change your eternal place, but your experience of the now is impacted by the fact that he um, has righteousness and justice. And mm -hmm. justice is um, everything, it will be served with just uh, uh, provision and just uh, measurement and I can't alter that mm -hmm. um, I can't accept that and, and I'll give you right. an I'll give you a simple example um, what's the requirement for anybody born since Adam and Eve to have mm -hmm. re have relationship with God what's the requirement there has to be a sacrifice no which happened no, to be no, Jesus no go back go back back up back up What's the, what's the pure requirement? Perfection. Yeah. Okay, why? Because God is holy, God is righteous, and God is just. And because of that, I cannot, God speaking, I can't alter that truth. Mm -hmm. um, and so by definition, because you're not perfect, uh, and why? Because you, you went to a sin nature... Right. And remember the sin nature is I chose my own way. Right. When we and we go I, to self. Basically. And I'm no longer holy. I am no longer mm -hmm. righteous. I am no longer perfect. Justice has to be served. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, God says, because you can't get there, um, on my own, on my own nature, mm -hmm. I took care of the problem. Now, what did he do? That's where he sent Jesus, and, and what, actually to what, cover us. Yeah. yeah. And what did Christ do? What did he do? He went to he the cross. He died for us. Yeah, he went to yeah. the cross, took on the penalty required mm -hmm. to serve justice. He was the ultimate sacrifice, yeah. And I sacrificed myself to satisfy the justice. Mm -hmm. And I now have forgiven everybody at the cross. 
in, in, in mm-hmm. Hebrews is a great description. Uh, once and for all, done deal, finished, completed. Right. Uh, everybody's been forgiven. Okay. Uh, but um, has everybody been forgiven? Yes. Has the requirement per se of perfection been removed? No. It has to be satisfied. Mm, but it is satisfied through Christ. In order to now have it satisfied, given that, that Christ did it for me, on what basis can I now restore my relationship back with God into his justice? Basically being with him, with Christ. I have to receive and say, mm-hmm. I understand I'm separated. I understand the, the requirement. I uh, confess that requirement and I receive mm-hmm. the gift this is why he talks all, all over the all over the place. My gift is me. My mm-hmm. my gift is it's just receive my gift. There's nothing more you can do because that's the only remedy. Right. Is receive my gift. I did it. I satisfied the issue. I I took care of justice, and you have to receive it. And when you receive it, I place on you, in you and on you righteousness. That mm-hmm. allows us to have a relationship because justice has to be served. Right. Okay. Um, for those that don't accept it, what happens to them? Eternally separated from God. Yeah, they live in hell, eternally separated from God. Why? Because justice stands on its own. Mm-hmm. In other words, and this is, by the way, what's happening with the sappy view of love is that that truth is being diminished. Mm-hmm. Well, there's lots of ways to God. No, God loves everybody. There's even theology out there that, that hell doesn't even exist. Uh, right. that I think everybody one of the ones I it. hear often from people is, you know, how would I, you know, why would I follow a God who actually condemned anyone to hell? Right. Right. You know, that's a, a common argument. Right. So the nature of God, see, is holy, is righteous, is justice, and it can't be altered, and it has to be satisfied uh, through what Christ did, so that prior to that, the only way it could be satisfied was a sacrificial system mm-hmm. that was set up through the priest, through Israel, through um, atonement, what's called atonement, and sacrifice. And and everybody who participated in that had to join it. So the way it worked, which by the way is what, where Christ, member had trouble with the, uh, what he called, uh, you've made my temple into a den of thieves. Mm-hmm. Okay, well here, well, let's talk about why. Um, he set up the system to illustrate what he was ultimately going to do permanently. Uh, and that was high priest who was uh, the only one that could go in the Holy of Holies where mm-hmm. the ultimate sacrifice would be once a year, by the way, uh, goes in um, and he sacrifices uh, an animal on behalf of himself. Mm-hmm. I, I can't even be cleansed unless I sacrifice the blood on, on this animal on my behalf to have a relationship with you. Okay, good. Once I've completed that, I do it for my family. Mm-hmm. And now my family can join in that process. Third, I do it for the nation and all that have, mm-hmm. a, have a desire to join me. And I offer this forgiveness. And by the way, it was only once a year and it was only for a year. And the, right. one, the one thing he couldn't do is sit down. Okay, right. now, how come? Why couldn't he sit down? Because it wasn't done. It wasn't finished. Because it wasn't done. It was only temporary. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's no seat there. And so he, he couldn't sit down because it wasn't permanent until Christ, when he sacrificed, died, was the sacrifice, was the high priest. And then he went to the right hand of the father. What did he do? sat down he sat down done yeah. completed finished and that's why hebrews talks about the book of hebrews it's mm-hmm. all it's all been finished um, okay so now the high priest has now finished that sacrifice 
Right. Okay, now everybody else, by the way, this is why all of Israel would go to the temple every year, mm -hmm. every year. Now that he did that, you who are, you know, uh, you could be a, a priest, not the high priest, and just a, a person, a, a man or a woman, um, you have to sacrifice and join that sacrifice mm -hmm. and say, I trust what just happened. I'm invited to join it through death myself. Right. And I do. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to now think about it. They're traveling long distances. Right. So if they either had to bring their own animal or they said, well, when I get there, I'll buy one. Mm hmm. And so what happened when Jesus got there and saw what was going on, he said. Because they were selling these things at the temple, right? For people to be able to sacrifice. Well, and what he's saying is that instead of charging them a usual, normal little amount so they could sacrifice, because mm -hmm. they know they have to. Right. You've raised the prices beyond mm -hmm. normal and it's very unfair what right. you've done because your focus and he said think about everybody what 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 i just experienced my heart is for them to come to to have life right but you are trying to earn money and be greedy mm -hmm. on that thought you don't care about right. them you care about making money mm -hmm. and he says you know you've turned it into a den of thieves you guys don't care mm -hmm. one iota about this whole thing. You're just trying to make money. He said, this isn't what this is all about. And by the way, right. I'm, I'm about ready to show you what it's really about, which is, you know, my death mm -hmm. and, and sacrifice. So um, he does. And, but at that point, because of, here's what I, here's what the priest did. Everybody has to join me. He set up the, the process so that they could have eternal life with him and could have uh, abundant life with him. That continues. And Christ mm -hmm. says, now it's receiving me what I've done. And you don't have to go to a temple anymore. You don't have to sacrifice anything other than what? Yourself. Right. What does that mean? Die to self. I, I put to death my thought that I can get there on my own. Mm -hmm. I receive what you've done to satisfy the problem. And now I can have life with you. Mm -hmm. And if I do, justice is served because I received it. If I don't, justice is still served because I, I lose my opportunity to have a relationship with you. And in eternity, I'll spend separately from you. Know, by the way, mm -hmm. we say, okay, I can understand that line. Right. What about what about believers? Where do we stand on that? Um because we don't sacrifice anymore and we have Christ in us. So does that mean we're always righteous? Uh, no, it doesn't. It's interesting. So we'll pick this up next time. Okay. Uh, and remember, we're talking about um, is the God of the New Testament different than the God of the Old Testament? And mm -hmm. how, do, how do we relate to that? And so we're trying to set it up of, well, wait a minute. First of all, he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, it, he says... Uh, my word is true. My word is right. Right. I love I righteousness. Love righteousness and, and justice. justice. And I am justice. And everything is based mm -hmm. on justice. He right. said that's never changed. And it still still exists. You just need to understand the dynamics of it and what the opportunity is now to live it. And interesting enough, he says, the way that you think I am in the New Testament, mm -hmm. I was the same in the Old Testament. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go both sides of that so that great because we tend to think he seems less judgmental in the New Testament than, than the Old Testament. Right. OK, well, th look, think of the opposite of that. If he's if he's kind and generous in the New Testament, was he that way in the Old Testament? Uh, let's, mm. We'll we'll go. We'll go find out. So a it's a little it's treasure hunt and look at yeah, that. It's, it's yes. really cool. So <laughs> we'll pick this up next time. And uh keep going with it but it's a great question yeah, it's a great question i think it's one that people wrestle with all the time yep. so it's a good one to, to bring up here yep and we'll keep going excellent well thanks so much for joining us and we will see you next time looking forward to yep. it we'll see you then thank you for joining us for today's episode of come and see 
your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos. Thank you.